you enjoy my content, check out this new channel I recently started called IT List. It's a place for other interests I have that don't fit in with the content on this channel, and a few that might, like this one I just did on the top 10 most famous magnetic motors. I'll drop a link in the description below. So I had this idea for using gravity to try to break out of the magnetic gate and overcome flux loops, or the sticky spot as people call it. This started out with experimenting with V-gates. The V-gate concept was developed by Robert Calloway. I've always liked the design of them, and they're fun to experiment with. They work to a certain degree in either direction, but the principle behind the design is that the track draws the magnets placed on it to the spot where they will line up at their strongest point where the distance between the north pole row and south pole row of magnets on the track align most closely with the north and south poles of the magnets moving across the track. The problem with using them for a rotary magnetic motor is that they require a secondary force to escape the magnetic field. That could be gravity, leverage, or an electromagnetic field. This wouldn't necessarily be the strongest or most efficient way to create a magnetic motor though, as there isn't a great deal of motive force involved in most of the designs that I've seen. Here's an example of how you can use gravity to break out of the gate by dropping the roller just slightly lower than the magnets on the track as it reaches the end of the track. These configurations are fun to play around with as well as experiment on. Here's an example of how you can use gravity to break out of the V-gate when rolling a steel ball across the track. This really just amounts to eye candy though, if you aren't able to enter and exit the track on a level plane. There is no motive force gain, or over unity in other words. There are a lot of ways to attempt this besides a V-gate. I've experimented with various magnetic gates and assemblies and have recently recreated some older experiments where I swapped out a steel ball for a magnet or magnetic cart. Some things work better using a magnet because you can produce enough motive force with the added weight of a cart to pass through varying magnetic fields created by gates, and others work better using metal objects like steel balls. The goal is always the same though, to use a series of magnetic gates to move an object into and out of its magnetic field without having to use an added force to place it into the field, then to cause it to exit said field or gate with some distance without being drawn back into the magnetic field or still being captured by that field. That would be the very definition of an induction expulsion system, which I covered in my video series on the three types of magnetic motive force systems. So as I was experimenting, I started thinking of ways to tweak things and try different ways of experimenting, as I always do. Lately, that's led to designing and printing various 3D parts. I seriously don't know how people that experiment with magnetic motors and tracks manage to get by without having a 3D printer. The most difficult thing for me used to be driving around to different parts stores looking for things I could use for projects and trying to explain to people what I needed and that what I was looking for probably would have a completely different purpose than what I needed it for. That inevitably would lead to them asking me what I needed it for, which is rather difficult to explain to somebody without giving them quite a bit of background. So I'd usually just say it was for a science experiment or something. With 3D printers, I just make whatever I need without leaving the house, and the cost is so minimal by comparison. Everything I built for this project and the last one was made out of some filaments I've had lying around for two years, and I didn't even finish off one spool of it. One of the problems with testing V-gates is that you have to measure out your magnets in exact placement and glue them in spot. If you get something wrong, you have to remeasure and move things around. It's time consuming. So I made these magnet holders that I can simply slide the magnets into and move them around with ease. You can stick them on top of a piece of metal if you wish, and make exact changes by simply moving the holders around to create different spacing. The main magnets I used in this project were simple, one half inch diameter by one quarter inch thickness neodymium magnets, by the way. I'm going to do something I haven't done previously and offer you the 3D files to print out all of the things I designed to experiment with in this video as a free download. I'll post a link in the video description should you wish to do your own experiments or tweak some of the things I've done in this video. There are a lot of great 3D printers out there. If you don't already have one, I'm sure you can find one pretty easily and inexpensively without my help. I'll post a link to what I'm using in the video description as well should you wish to take a look at it though. I was pretty particular in choosing mine. I wanted something you could print a fairly big object with at a decent price that produced a good quality print. I've been extremely satisfied with mine. 
It saved me so much time and effort and made it possible to build things I would have had to have machined previously. So here are a few of the configurations that I try. I don't always record every single thing I try, but I at least attempt to put enough material together to give you a good overview. If something looks promising, I take subtle pictures, record video, I'll write down exact measurements and placement of the magnets and materials so that I can circle back to it or expand upon it later. So these are the highlights of some of the different techniques I tried for this project. The more promising ones I may revisit or tweak later on, but it helps to analyze what I'm doing by recording it and watching it later. I also share all of this with you so that others can analyze what I've done, learn from it, and possibly build upon it and perfect it. This configuration in particular is a good example of the one inch barrier, which I'll touch on again momentarily. It draws the magnets in, holds it in place, but by sliding it forward just slightly, it kicks it back out the other side. I arranged the magnets in repulsion mode in this example, so it's not quite as exciting as it appears. This was one of the better configurations I tried. It's fairly basic and would need to be tweaked because the magnets pass through the track but do not exit with any motive force. So they are still being influenced by the magnetic fields. I noted in this configuration that if the magnets had a bit more weight to build momentum, they might be able to pass completely through the flux, which gave me the idea of designing a new cart that would employ steel G-gauge train wheels which would add some weight and potentially bring the magnets through the sticky spot or area of flux. I believe my wheels are mostly brass, so there is minimal magnetic attraction to the wheels. Now I've talked about this before on an old video that I did on the one inch barrier to building magnetic motor. I've always believed you could use gravity, leverage, or both to overcome that barrier. That's the barrier that usually causes a cogging effect when you build a rotary track that is roughly one inch between your starting point and a complete 360 degree rotary cycle. That 360 degree rotary cycle that people with a head full of physics laws and zero imagination like to argue is impossible, while quoting physics laws they assume you are unfamiliar with, all written before the invention of nuclear power. I jokingly like to refer to these people as the physics police. They can quote you the physics laws with little to no practical application and seem to always have an invariably inactive creative imagination. It's easier to test things in a linear track before attempting to build a rotary one. I learned this from studying Howard Johnson's magnetic motor research and corresponding with Robert Calloway when I first started researching magnetic motor force systems. I mention that in case you haven't seen all of my videos and wonder why I spend so much time working with linear tracks. My hope is always that I can speed up the learning curve for people interested in this sort of research and save you from making a few mistakes I've made in the learning process. Thanks for watching and do great things.